You are about to see Douglas Murray take on a whole panel concerning the war in the Middle East. This debate took place a few years ago, but remains even more relevant today. The topic in question is about the sympathy for Hamas within certain Western circles. The discussion is sparked by remarks made during a panel that included Douglas Murray, who articulated a standpoint that many find controversial yet crucial to understand. Let's dive in. Should the West now have a more sympathetic approach to Hamas in light of their involvement in the release of Alan Johnson? In the light of Hamas's involvement in the release of Alan Johnston, should the West now take a more sympathetic approach to them? Well, Douglas Murray, you better start on that. Well, um, the answer is no. Of course not. <laughs> the, I, I'd like to know who it was who was booing in the audience. And I don't know who the Hamas supporter is in the audience here. Hamas is a terrorist organization which makes a fetish out of the murder of Jews. And I'd like to know who it was who thought that that movement was a good thing. This, incidentally, if you don't mind, Jew murder. Let me tell you what these people were doing just a couple of weeks ago to their own co-religionists in the Gaza, where they went to their next-door neighbors and threw people off buildings and shot people in the back when they were running away. And you think now this is a rehabilitated organization because they posed for the release of a journalist, All because right. they posed and organized that to look good. Mm -hmm. Douglas Murray raises an intriguing question. Why is there sympathy for Hamas in some Western quarters? This sympathy often comes from a place of viewing the Israeli-Palestinian conflict through a lens of underdog versus oppressor. However, this simplification overlooks the complexity of the conflict and the ideologies driving it. Hamas's charter, for instance, calls not just for resistance against occupation, but for the destruction of the state of Israel, a goal incompatible with peace or mutual coexistence. Statistics and reports from various human rights organizations highlight the brutal methods employed by Hamas, including the use of civilian areas in Gaza as launching pads for attacks against Israeli civilians. According to a report by Amnesty International, Hamas has engaged in war crimes, including the indiscriminate firing of rockets into civilian areas. This tactic not only endangers Israeli civilians, but also Palestinian civilians, who are used as human shields. Furthermore, public opinion polls offer an insightful look into the perspectives of the Palestinian population. A poll conducted by the Palestinian Center for Policy and Survey Research found a complex picture of support and opposition to Hamas within the Palestinian territories with varying views on the effectiveness of armed struggle versus negotiation. This internal diversity of opinion within the Palestinian community itself is often overshadowed in Western discourse by a monolithic portrayal of Hamas as the sole voice of Palestinian resistance. Notable figures and experts on Middle Eastern politics have criticized the uncritical sympathy for Hamas in the West. For instance, Bassam Aid, a Palestinian human rights activist, has repeatedly condemned the international community's failure to hold Hamas accountable for its actions, which he argues only perpetuates the suffering of the Palestinian people. Saeed Avasi, do you agree with that? Yeah, I don't understand, Douglas, most of what he says. I mean, I, I appreciate the comments that you make, but, Douglas, you make them with such venom and such the bizarre language. No, 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 you know, with bizarre language that it really doesn't help. I'm you can cozy up with Hamas, Douglas, you can hug Douglas, Hamas if Douglas, you want. Douglas, Douglas, you've had your fair share. Let us speak. <laughs> so you do. It doesn't help. We need to look forward for things. Um, I think that uh, we... Um, I actually um, uh, welcome the fact that Hamas were actually involved in the release um, of this person. And it was the first step. Um, and, and, but we must be very clear about um, Hamas. In terms of... In terms of moving forward, should we appreciate them? Well, I hope that any organisation would help in the release of a hostage. Mm. And, and I, think that, um, I, I think that we need to be very clear about this. Um, in, in the recognition of Hamas, the principles, the quartet principles, have been very, very clear. Hamas, if it is to be a responsible government, must recognise the State of Israel. It must denounce violence. Um, and it must be prepared to accept previous uh, peace agreements. So what we have to send out the message to Hamas is, this is a first step, but you know what the table rules are, and if you're prepared to come to the table, then maybe we can think about it. How do you distinguish it. between them and, and the way we negotiated with the IRA? Exactly. I think without, we said without, exactly without, the same. Without, exactly. without yes, doing any of these things. No, no, well, we, we did. We made it very, very clear. They have to denounce violence. They have to be prepared to put down their arms. And they have to be prepared to recognise... I mean, they were not saying that they do not recognise the existence of Britain. They or did not want to that a united state Ireland to and they didn't have to give up that claim during the negotiations. And I still have Mr Shalit. Anyway.
Misplaced sympathy for Hamas in some quarters of the West can be seen as part of a broader trend where moral relativism obscures the lines between oppressor and oppressed, between terrorist organizations and democratic states defending their citizens. This view often ignores the fundamental differences in values and methods between democratic states like Israel and terrorist groups like Hamas. Israel, despite facing existential threats, operates within a framework of laws designed to protect human rights and minimize civilian casualties, even when engaging in self-defense. In stark contrast, Hamas deliberately targets civilian populations as a strategy, a clear violation of international law and basic human decency. Moreover, the sympathy for Hamas in the West often neglects the voices of Palestinian victims of Hamas's tyranny within Gaza. Human rights organizations have documented numerous instances where Hamas has suppressed dissent, persecuted minorities, and imposed harsh governance that contradicts the very democratic values some of its Western sympathizers claim to uphold. For example, according to a report by Human Rights Watch, Palestinians in Gaza have been subjected to arbitrary arrests, torture, and even extrajudicial killings by Hamas for criticizing the group's rule or for alleged collaboration with Israel without due process. Critics of Western sympathy for Hamas, including prominent Muslim reformers like Mayajid Nawaz, argue that such sentiment betrays a form of low-expectation racism or the bigotry of low expectations, where Westerners do not hold groups like Hamas to the same moral standards expected of their own. Societies or Israel This perspective suggests that by excusing or even romanticizing Hamas's actions, the West undermines not only the prospects for peace, but also the struggle for human rights and democratic governance within Palestinian society. I think we absolutely need to be sympathetic to the Palestinian people. This is like the longest occupation in modern times. Yeah. Why would normal people decide to support like a terrorist group? It's because they feel like they've got no other options. And we have supported Israel for so long and for way, way too long. Douglas Murray. Gaza is not occupied. And to make the equivalent between the suffragettes, the suffragettes never got onto a bus and tried to blow it up and kill as many people as possible. If they did, women might not have the vote. Okay. The, man in, the man in blue there. Yeah. I'll come to you, The man in blue there. Let's be clear. Hamas has a popular mandate to rule the Palestinian people. Does this mean that every Palestinian is a terrorist facilitator? Should we just eliminate all of them because by calling them a terrorist organization mm. you're obviating the possibility of negotiating with them if you just call them a terrorist organization they're in charge of the country does that mean we should wipe out palestine don't say they speak for the palestinian people hamas been, and they palestinians have elected, are different. they've been elected democratically right. Okay, try uh, Come in, yeah. Okay, number one, they do speak for the palestinian people because they were democratically elected. Um, <laughs> secondly, um, and the, the other point... Does he speak that, for you? Um, He's in government. Yes, does he, he does, because he was the majority. No, not all the time, but I support him because he is the government. Well, he isn't the government by himself. 